Hey, this is Al Crouch with Indiana Lazy Bushman. Um, I'm, this is my son, Connor. I'm gonna be shooting a series on uh, beekeeping. Um, I keep honeybees here out at the property. Um, beekeeping has been around for thousands and thousands of years. The Egyptians used to use honey for uh, broken bones, burns, cuts. Uh, people overseas are starting to use it now in the medical field. Um, it's a free source of sugar. It's all natural. Honey can never spoil because of enzymes that are in that honey that fight against antibacterials. Uh, you can keep honey forever. If it turns to sugar, all you have to do is reheat it up and it'll turn right back to honey. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the different parts of the hives and the stuff that you'll need to uh, get started. Um, first off, you're going to need a base. And this is where the bees go in and out. This is a deep super. On the deep supers, the frames are this thick. So you're going to need, on, when you get started, two of these. The reason you're going to need two of these deep supers is because the honeybees always have to have room as they're laying eggs and growing. If they run out of room, what will happen is the queen will lay a, a, another queen egg and several queens will hatch and then they'll swarm out which weakens your hive. So you need to start off with two of these at least. And you will order honeycomb from the manufacturer. Kelly's is one out of uh, Kentucky that you can order from. There's several that you can look up on the internet. And this honeycomb looks like this. Start out. This gives the bees a pattern in which they uh, build the comb or else they would build the comb randomly throughout that and this makes it a lot stronger. You're going to need a queen excluder. These come in a wood frame or a metal frame like this one here. What this does is this keeps the queen from going up into your honey and laying eggs into your honey when you go to extract your honey. If you don't have one of these on, what will happen is the queen will lay eggs into the honey comb and then when you go to extract in the honey you're going to be pulling out bee larvae and uh, junk and it darkens the honey and makes the honey look real dark. So the next off you'll be putting a queen excluder on your two beehives like this. Then you'll need a shallow super to go on next. Shallow super is what I'm going to collect my honey out of. These are some that need reworked and need new honeycomb which when they're reworked have these sheets in it here for the honey bees to build honey off of. The darker the comb gets over the years, two or three years, it starts looking like this. When you extract your honey out of that, the honey will be a lot darker. When you have this type of comb in here, the comb, when the bees build off of, your honey will come out crystal clear, almost looks like water when it comes out. The reason that you use a shallow super is because when the, this is full of honey, this is 50 pounds. Now, I've seen beekeepers use the deep supers before, and some beekeepers like to use it, but you're going to have 100 pounds of honey you're going to have to deal with when you're extracting that to carry around. The next thing you guys will need is an inner liner. This goes onto the top of it to keep your honey from uh, getting built all over the top of your super for your top which goes on next. Now then, we'll review this again. You've got your base, you got your deep supers, which are the deep ones, you've got a queen excluder, you've got a shallow super, you've got your inner liner and your top. Now I'm going to show you how it needs to set up for a mock setup here for you guys when you get started. You're going to need two eight inch blocks like this. When you set this up, you want to make sure that you level it out. If, if a beehive is not level, the bees will build the honey on whichever side it is to keep this hive from tipping over. That's the way the bees do. They naturally know that it's tilting, so to compensate for the tilting, they'll build the honey to one side. You want your honey built evenly all the way across when you're getting ready to extract your bees, so therefore you want this leveled out as level as possible. Just for purposes, it's not going to be level because I'm showing this for demonstration purposes. This is a base that 
basically is built out of a two by fours, piece of uh, roll roofing, and uh, some plywood underneath. This sets on top of my uh, blocks like this, and then grab a hold of that other side, go all the way down, slide it up there. Okay, set it down. It's going to look like this when it's done, ready to use. So that's your setup on your beehive. I'm going to go over some other components here that you're going to need in beekeeping. You're going to need a pair of beekeeping gloves from the supplier, gloves that you can, uh, if you use a regular pair of leather gloves because you can't afford these, you're going to want to make sure that you use duct tape and duct tape this, your, your sleeve up so that you can't get the bees in it. You're going to need a bee suit, at least this top part here like this, this keeps the bees out. Uh, I've seen videos where some beekeepers, they actually go out there without any of this stuff on and they work with their bees like that. Me, myself personally, and my son Connor have allergic reactions to the bees, so I wear, I wear a bee suit when I'm uh, working with them. I also wear an outer suit, this is just for extra protection. Then you'll need a smoker. I not, ne don't necessarily use the smoker until I extract off. What the smoker is used for is when you want to calm the bees down with the smoke. When you spray the smoke down in the bottom of your hive here, the smoke rises up in between and the bees will gorge themselves with honey and the other, and the other half of the bees will start fanning the hive to clear the smoke out of the hive. So that when you open up your top, you don't have a swarm of bees coming out and attacking you. The more you work with them, the less they come flying out and want to try to attack you and sting you. If you can't afford one, I picked this one up for three bucks. This still works. I, I picked this up at a thrift store, old antique store. They've got them in antique and thrift stores and you can pick them up for three to five bucks. You buy one brand new, this is a stainless steel model that I own. You're gonna pay 30, $35 for one. And then you need some kind of tool because the bees will seal every little crack in there. So if you're wanting to get up underneath there after you pop your top off, lots of times, you're gonna have to take this tool and insert in to pop up because the bees will seal every little crack up with their glue. And then you're going to need, hand me that burlap over there. You're going to need burlap. You'll cut shreds of burlap off and put in here for your smoker. You want to use burlap, 100% cotton. You, you don't use anything but the two because if you do, you can poison your bees. Uh, some, of the, some of the clothing and some of the cloth and stuff have chemical treatments on them and if you use that in here and spray it in here you can poison your bees. Burlap burns the best, it burns slow, you can get it at your uh, um, where they keep horse supplies, lots of times they'll sell old potato bags and onion bags and things like that. And I also keep a brush on hand. You'll have sugar ants that get up inside your hive sometimes and you got to keep them brushed off and sometimes you have to treat your hive for the sugar ants to get rid of them. So uh, there's all your components that you need to start a beehive with. And a lot of this stuff, if you look online, you can find it used. If you can't find it used, you're going to end up with about $350 to start off with, with one hive. One hive I've seen produce as much as three, 400 pounds of honey uh, at one time with a beekeeper that I, I kept bees with. I've had mine produce anywhere from 100 to uh, 200 pounds of honey off of uh, just one hive. But, your first year you're not going to get any honey off of it because they're going to be busy building their hive and laying eggs and building the colony and making the colony stronger. So that's uh, what you need for beekeeping. Um, one other thing I haven't covered is you want to get some wire to run down here, wire mesh. Big enough the bees can get through in and out and I'll show you that when I put a super on another hive. I've already got the wire mesh put on here. What that does is it keeps mice from going in there. I call that a mouse guard. You, put, you can cut your own out to put on here and I'll get you a close up of one of my other hives that I've already got this on to. So that's what all you need for beekeeping there. Thank you.